Hello everyone, this is Dr. Meet Shah once again with another video. In this video, we are going to learn how to solve problem sum based on registration under GST. Okay, this is a very important topic from the exam point of view. Uh, there are few rules that we need to learn before starting, you know, to solve the problem sum. The sums are very simple. Okay, so we'll first go through uh, various rules that we need to keep in mind and then we'll be taking up two problem sum or two different types of problem sum that are expected to come in your exam. So let us see how to solve sum based on registration under GST. Now, before starting the sum, there are some rules that we need to note down. The very first thing that we need to understand is the limit for registration or what is the threshold limit for the registration. Now, uh, for registration purposes, uh, you know, there are different categories of states that we need to learn about. Okay, so basically, there are the states have been divided into three uh, categories. Number one, state with a threshold limit of rupees 10 lakhs for both goods and services. Okay, so in that particular category, we have four states, Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland and Tripura. Okay, if uh, the sum of the question is based on, you know, the supplier who is residing in one, any of these four states, then the threshold limit is 10 lakh for goods and services. So keep in mind MMNT, okay, so these are the, like the four abbreviated words, MMNT that you need to remember, Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland and Tripura. If uh, you are from, if the supply is from the state of Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Sikkim, Uttarakhand, Pondicherry, and Telangana, then the state uh, has a threshold limit of rupees 20 lakhs for both goods and services. So the rule is, if you are from MMNT state, 10 lakhs. If you are from Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Sikkim, Uttarakhand, Pondicherry, and Telangana, 20 lakhs uh, is your threshold limit. And for the rest of India, okay, that is Jammu Kashmir, Assam, Himachal Pradesh and all other states, okay, other than the first two categories, uh, the threshold limit is rupees 20 lakhs for services and 40 lakhs for only goods, if you're only dealing in goods. And if you're dealing in goods and services both, then the threshold limit is 20 lakhs. Okay, so this is a major threshold limit rule that we have to remember. So number one, if you're from MMNT states, so that will be based on 10 lakhs. Okay, if you are from Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Sikkim, Uttarakhand, Puducherry, Telangana, 20 lakhs is the limit. And for rest of India, if you are only dealing in uh, service, it is 20 lakhs. If you are only dealing in goods, it is 40 lakhs. And if you are dealing in both, again, it is 20 lakhs. Okay, that is it. This is the only threshold limit that you all need to remember. After that, it's given that a person will be required to register if the aggregate turnover exceeds this threshold limit. So once it goes beyond the numbers, okay, the, the limit which we learn, only if the supply, the aggregate turnover uh, exceeds this particular amount, only then the person will be, you know, required to register under GST. Okay, so this is a very important rule that you all need to note down. Next, person not liable for registration, number one. Person exclusively engaged in the business of supplying goods and services that are not liable to tax. So no tax goods are there. So on that GST registration not compulsive. Person exclusively engaged in business of supplying goods service that are wholly exempt from tax. So if you are exempted goods, again or exempted service, no need of registering. And last, agriculture is to the extent of supply of produce out of cultivation of land. Anything which is in raw material, agriculture produce, which is in raw form, okay, on that GST registration is not compulsory. Okay, so, person who are not liable for registration, you all can note down these three points. Next, compulsory registration. Person making interstate taxable supply. So if there are person who is, you know, from one state and supplying goods to another state, then compulsory will have to register no matter whatever it will be your limit. Casual taxable person making taxable supply. Okay, a, a taxable casual taxable person means is a person who occasionally undertakes transaction involving supply of goods and services or both. Okay, so if you are a casual taxable person who, you know, sell taxable stuff, so in that case, you'll have to compulsory register. A non-resident taxable person making taxable supply. So, you know, if an NRI makes a taxable supply, he has to register. 
and person who are required to pay under reserve uh, uh, sorry under reverse charge so those who have registered under reverse charge they have to compulsorily register under gst no matter whatever is the value of supply of goods or uh, whatever is the aggregate turnover okay for compulsory registration these are the four points that you need to keep in mind okay Chalo. so that's it these are the only rules that you have to remember 20 lakhs for the first category sorry 10 lakhs for the first category 20 lakh for the second and third it is 20 and 40 depending on whether it is good service or both okay now let us see how to solve the very first type of sum under calculation of registration under gst okay now the quest we'll read out a question once and then we'll try to understand how we need to solve this ahead. Uh, Meza Sate Brothers provides the detail of transaction of their business from the state of Maharashtra during the month of October 2018. Are they liable to get registered under GST? If yes, then from when? They are giving you different dates. Okay, so always remember whenever such kind of sum comes, first always check from which state he is in the state of Maharashtra. Okay, check like next whether it is only goods or service or both. I can see there are goods supplied and also services provided. So it's goods and services. Okay, so remember state of Maharashtra when goods and services are given the threshold limit is 20 lakhs. Okay, if it goes beyond that you have to register under GST. Okay, only supply. Now always remember aggregate turnover means only supply. No purchases can be included in the calculation. Now, let us see how to solve this sum. Okay, the columns that will be required will be date. You know, we'll have date, we'll have particulars, we'll have the amount, and I need one more extra column called as cumulative amount because then that, that column will come to know exactly uh, when did you know the, uh, the aggregate turnover you know, surpass the threshold limit. Okay, so one by one, we'll start now. First, on 8 October, goods supplied to Nanded. The moment you are supplying, it comes under aggregate turnover. Yes, so we will note down that. So, date particulars may be note down that transaction amount was 3,17,500. Second, on 10th October, again, there is a supply. It doesn't matter whether it is exempted, tax free, taxable. If you are supplying, you need to add it. So, exempt supply to Surat, yes, a date, name, and the transaction value. Third is on 17th October, taxable goods supplied to Ravi. Again, you are supplying goods. It will be considered amount is 11,50,000. Next is on 19th October, inward supply. Now, inward supply means purchases. Purchases cannot be taken into consideration to find the total aggregate turnover. We will have to ignore it. So, we ignore it. 20th, again, you are supplying something. We will consider that. 20th October, goods supplied to Nandurbar. Amount is 350. And last... 25th go again services provided your providing service will be considered okay to shangli we note down the value is 1,75,000 very simple only uh, anything whatever you are supplying we just use those we just add up we just take those things into consideration now we need to find the cumulative cumulative meaning first number will be as it is 3,17,500 now add this to the next value okay so it will be 3,17,000 plus 2 lakh 10,000 okay so I'll just put an arrow it is this so you need to add this and you need to bring the value here so 3 lakh 17 500 plus 2 lakh 10 will give you 5 lakh 27 500 plus 11 lakh 50,000 gives you 16 77 500 plus 350 gives you 2027 500 and lastly when you add 1 lakh 75,000 you will get 22 lakhs 2500 just a cumulative total once you come to this point, now it is the most simplest part. Just check now, since he was in the state of Maharashtra, he is supplying goods and services both. So the threshold limit is supposed to be 20 lakhs. Now, when we added up in cumulative, we saw that, um, you know, the supply, the aggregate turnover is getting over 20 lakhs in this particular cell. Okay. And the date corresponding to this cell is on 20th October. Okay. So, Sate Brothers aggregate turnover has actually exceeded the threshold limit. So the moment it gets exceeded, he has to register under GST. So see our final statement. Sate Brothers aggregate turnover exceeded the threshold limit of 20 lakhs. Therefore, they are liable to register under GST from 20th October 2018.
ठीक है जस्ट द डेट वेन इट गोज बी ऑन द डेट वेर इट हैज एक्सीडेड द थ्रेश होल्ड में दैट डेट विल बिकम द डेट ऑन विच द रजिस्ट्रेशन हैज टू यू नो ही हैज टू रजिस्टर अंडर जीएसटी सेकेंडली दैट इज द अपडेट ऑन विच हेज थ्रेश होल्ड लिमिट हैज सरपास ओके दिस इज इट दिस इज ऑल वॉट यूल हैव टू डू इन ऑर्डर टू सॉल्व द सम बेस्ड ऑन रजिस्ट्रेशन अंडर जीएसटी तो दिस इज वन टाइप ऑफ सम विच यूजली कम Okay, the question. Okay, now we will take up another type of question which usually comes, which is a little different than the current question. Okay, so this was sum number one. I hope everyone have understood that. We we'll start with question number two. Now, if you look carefully, the question is a little different than the previous. Okay, so Sajan started the business in April two thousand and one. From which month he will be liable for registration as per the provision of GST Act? Give reason. They are giving you the various months. Purchases may they are giving you taxable, tax-free sales may taxable and tax-free. Now remember one thing: in order to get the threshold limit, we need aggregate turnover. May that is nothing but the totals of sales. So purchases are not included at all. So these are the first two columns are just dummy. Okay, not required. It won't be appearing in our solution. So what will appear will be only in the months, uh, the taxable sale and tax-free sales. Okay. Now before solving, always check which state. now they haven't given us any detail relating to state so if nothing is mentioned we have to assume it's from the other category that is the general category that is the last category where the threshold limit is 20 lakhs for service 40 for goods and if it's goods and services then again 20 lakhs now in such kind of sum now here they have not mentioned whether it is goods or service always remember whenever you get such kind of sum where you have purchase sale taxable tax free given it is always to be assumed that it is supply of goods only okay since it is the supply of goods only the threshold limit will be 40 lakhs for other category states since there is no state mentioned we have to assume it is other category okay since it is not mentioned goods and services we will have to assume it is supposed to be purely based on goods so the threshold limit is going to be 40 lakhs so now let us see how what columns will be required here okay columns may all need months sales ke under taxable sale tax free sale and total sale that is nothing but the addition of taxable and tax free and then i'll need another class column that will be cumulative in order to find out where did that actual turnover exceed that threshold limit okay chalo now since all of them are there's nothing to mention it's all sale taxable and tax free so we'll note on the months we'll note on the taxable sale value tax free value and find the total of each and every sale chalo so for the month of april to june Your taxable sale was seven and a half lakh and nineteen lakhs, which comes to total twenty six lakhs fifty thousand. For the month of July, it was seven and seven sixty, so total fourteen lakh sixty. For the next, it was one lakh and six lakh fifty, so it became seven lakh fifty. For next, it was four lakhs and two lakh eighty, so it came to six eighty. Next, it was two point five and seven point five, so that came to ten lakhs. For November four and a half and three lakh twenty six thousand, so that became three lakh thirty thousand five hundred. And last seven thousand and eighty four thousand, that comes to ninety one thousand. Okay, we noted on taxable, tax free, and got the total under the total sales column. Now the next is very simple. We need to find cumulative total. So we take the first value as it is. And we add it to the subsequent next value. So it's twenty six lakh fifty plus fourteen lakh sixty will give you forty one lakh forty ten thousand. Plus seven lakh fifty will give you forty eight lakh sixty. Plus six lakh eighty thousand gives you fifty four lakh forty thousand fifty five forty. Plus ten lakhs will give you sixty five forty. Plus three lakh thirty five hundred will give you sixty eight lakh seventy thousand five hundred. Plus ninety one thousand will give you sixty nine lakh sixty one thousand five hundred. Now, the aggregate uh, or the cumulative turnover has been noted down. Now our rule: other state uh, only goods threshold limit is forty lakh. So we have to see where that that forty lakh or uh, where that that turnover exceed forty lakh. So if you look carefully, in the very second, in the very second cell, it has already exceeded forty lakhs, and the month where it has exceeded is July. So that's it. That's the final answer. Okay. So we'll write now. My conclusion will be: Sajan's aggregate turnover has exceeded the threshold limit of forty lakhs. Therefore, they are liable to register under GST from the month of July. That is it. 
the sum doesn't require any other calculation we just have to find the register is the person liable to register or not okay based on certain condition okay so these are the two types of sum which are usually asked from the exam point of view under gst i hope both you all have understood both the types of sum okay chalo with that uh, we'll be ending this video here stay tuned for further more videos which will be uploaded based on the subject goods and services or gst thank you